Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So let's take a look at my biological age, 54 months after starting my longevity experiment using the blood test I had taken in November of 2023. Let's quickly go through the supplements I was taking when I had my blood test done. Don't jump ahead because some of these have actually changed. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, 1.5 grams a day on a Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams per day. Metformin, 1,000 milligrams a day. 500 milligrams between 6 and 6.30 in the morning. And then another 500, the second lot, between 9.30 and 10 just before I go to bed. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. I used to take 10,000 three days a week. That's now gone, just 5,000 a day. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms. That's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams, the L3 and 8 version. High molecular weight hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams a day. That's up from 200 milligrams a day. Fisetin, 2.4 grams on the first, second and third of each month. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day, again, on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know how, why I take it like that and not every day in my supplement stack in the link, uh, there's a link in the description below to a video that explains all of those reasons. Baby aspirin, 81 milligrams a day. Cert 6 activator, 800 milligrams a day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day, 200 in the morning, about 6, 6.30, 200 between 11 and midday, and then 200 with my second dose of metformin between 9, 30 and 10 before I go to bed. And glynac or glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams per day. So the first website I use um, uses my blood test results. This is longevityadvantage.com and there's a link in the description below to this website. Once you come to the landing page, you scroll all the way to the bottom until you see the 10 elements that they want you to fill in from your blood test. I'll leave that up. I won't go through them. There's no need. You can see here that my test back in September of 2023, my chronological age was 59 and my phenotypic age was 52.81. And I'll throw up the definition of phenotypic age uh, now. Phenotypic age versus chronological back then was minus 6.19. So just over six years younger, which is which is not too bad at all. My DNA methylation age came back as 52.04. And my DNA methylation age versus my chronological age then came as minus 6.96. So reduction of just under seven years younger. You can see now my results from November of 2023. Again, 59, I'm not 60 until next April. Phenotypic age this time came back as 50.34. My phenotypic age versus my chronological age came in at minus 8.66. So this time, just over eight and a half years younger, which again is good. My DNA methylation age this time is 49.67. My DNA methylation versus my chronological or my birth age is minus 9.33. So a reduction in age of just over nine years, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the only thing that's really different from my last test is my alkaline phosphate score. It was low this time compared to other tests. And this is an element obviously is tested. It was 34 and I'm normally between um, 40 and 30. The bottom of the range is 34. Um, I thought this might have an effect on my age, but this wasn't the case. Although if it was higher in the reference range, maybe my age would have been younger. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. So let's take a look at the second site I use. This is it, biologicalage.com. This site only asks you questions. And again, there's a link in the description below. They don't want any blood results, um, although they do ask you a question about your blood pressure. Um, since I first used this site, it's been updated quite a lot. Far more questions now about a range of different lifestyle factors. In September of 2023, when I was 59 and five months, you can see here it came back with a score of 48 or an age of 48. So 11 years younger. That's great. But because it only asks questions, I don't think it's really that accurate. Um, this time I took the test at the beginning of November when I was 59 and seven months. It reads 50 years of age again, which is great. So around nine years younger but not really that accurate in my humble opinion. So I'm three months older, but my biological age is decreased by two years compared to the last time I had the test done. This is obviously not as, uh, as accurate as the algorithm uh, website that actually uses your blood markers. Um, you can see at the bottom here, you've got some very generic statements about health and fitness. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which I agree with. 
My breakfast on some days is at midday and on my Oma days, my breakfast is at 6 p.m. They're talking about breakfast being the first meal of the day, which again is an advertising gimmick from a cereal company. It says eating at least five servings of fruit and vegetables every day. Again, that's good, but I think that little pearl of wisdom has been debunked now many times. High refined and deep fat foods are a sometimes treat and should only be eaten occasionally. I couldn't agree more with that. Uh, and it says do push-ups every day. Again, not bad advice. So at the time of this test, my chronological age was 59 years and seven months. Longevity advantage had my DNA methylation age or my biological age, my epigenetic age at 59.67 years. That's just under 10 years younger than my birth certificate says. The less accurate biologicalage.com had me at 50 years, again, which is nine years younger. They are both good to know. Uh, I think we, know, we can all agree that DNA methylation tests, which uses blood or saliva samples, is far more accurate than just asking questions. However, I would avoid companies like epiage.com who only test against less than 20 markers and look for companies that test against hundreds of thousands of markers for a far more accurate and a far more cost-effective option. So let's take a look at my progress so far. You can see this blue line. This is my chronological age, and this will continue to creep up every time I get a birthday. And the red line is my biological or my epigenetic age. You can see here they got very close, which was concerning. We found out that was down to uh, high creatinine levels because I was eating a lot of red meat and also taking creatine supplements. Um, I remedied that and my biological age dropped. You can see there it was 58 and then it dropped down to 52. You can see now it's dropped even further again down to 49.67. And that's the way I wanted to be. This gap is great, but as long as the red line is not close to the blue line, I'm going to be happy. Uh, this is a fictitious graph and this shows you what you don't want to be finding which is chronological age. This person is probably 61, 62, but the biological age you can see is above that, probably close to 67 or 68, which is which is not good. That's not what you're looking for. Um, as an aside, this is my youngest biological age ever. If you look at my DNA ages all the way back to January of 2021, um, this is the youngest I've ever been, which is, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So since my experiment started over five years ago, this, with regard to my biological age, is the youngest I've ever been, which obviously makes me very happy indeed. Um, obviously, controlling my creatine scores has helped. But do you think there's anything else that could be driving my biological age down? I'd like to see your comments in the comment section below. I'd be very interested to see what your opinions are. If you've had a blood test done lately, then why don't you give longevity advantage test a go? You've got nothing to lose. If you haven't had a blood test, then you can go for a biologicalage.com test, um, which is the questionnaire type one, but you've got to be honest with the answers. Some of the questions are written in a way that you probably can't answer them honestly. For example, the alcohol one, um, it doesn't give you the option of saying, I drink once or twice a week, which is what I do. It says, do you drink never or every day? So I tick every day because I can't say never. Um, if they had possibly the option of once a week, maybe my biological age would drop even further. I don't know. Um, if you do take one of these tests, uh, please consider letting us know in the comments below what your age was. 